Hello Lurkers! I'm Lauren Stone, the owner and founder of PopLurker.com and today we are going to discuss the pinnacle of my writing, which is my original fan theory called Alvin and the Chipmunks exists in a time paradox. Before we get started, make sure to like and subscribe to Pop Lurker on YouTube so you don't miss a single one of our updates. There is just a, such a long time history with this article. I wrote this article in 2017, back before there was even a Pop Lurker. This was my original blog. This article, I think I wrote somewhere in the first month of creating my own blog, like back in the day when it was like Lauren Stone, the blog. I was pitching this fan theory around. I had this fan theory in my head because at the time in 2017, my kids were watching a lot of Alvin and the Chipmunks, the new one that was on Nickelodeon at the time. And I being a kid that was born in 1985, I used to watch a lot of Alvin and the Chipmunks, tons of it. I loved Alvin and the Chipmunks. You know, the second one, it's been a while, but we're back with style, the 80s cartoon. Here's the thing, when you have kids and you watch what they watch a lot, you start getting like, you start paying attention to weird things, you start like reading between the lines and that's where fan theories and fan fiction comes from. You've read my Thomas and Friends stuff, you read my Sophia the First stuff, and believe me there's lots more in here. But Alvin and the Chipmunks. So this fan theory, again, was one that I had been playing with for a while. So I first pitched this to Cracked in like, again, probably early 2017 and they said no thank you like it doesn't work at the time they weren't taking wild speculation fan theories they needed damning evidence I didn't have damning evidence it's a cartoon it's wouldn't this be funny it's the same thing where we inspector gadget examined on pop lurker what's the deal here is dr. claw the original gadget is is Chief Quimby a scientist and Penny is his daughter to set to observe this Robocop man? Like all these fan theories that we've played with, you know, it's just for fun. So again, Crack didn't want it. I pitched it to Ranker and Ranker took a version of it, but it was slimmed down to their more listical style and it just, it just didn't do what they needed it to do for their writing. So I wrote it for myself put it on Pop Lurker, it did pretty well, and then I, in 2018 I loaned it out to another nerd media company and, you know, as like a guest post, like, hey, hey, here's this fan theory, it's on my personal blog, which I then turned into Pop Lurker, and now maybe it can get some more reads on your site. And it did! It gets new reads on that site too. So this fan theory, again, my original one, only this madness could be rambling in this head, has been you know, I, it's been making the rounds on the internet for four years now. So four years ago I wrote this and now we're gonna make a video. So I'm really hopeful that this works well for video content. Of course, due to copyright things, I'm not gonna be inputting any clips. I'll do pictures the same as I have in the article and I'll just kind of explain things. But yeah, we're not, no music, no video clips. Like this is not that, this is not that kind of video. So if that disappoints you, you know, you're welcome to move on. If you want to stay for the party, we got punch and pie. Let's go. My original article in Pop Lurker, which I have linked in the description below, gives you a vague introduction to Alvin and the Chipmunks, created in what year was it? Created in 1958 by Ross Bogdasarian, who realized that if he sped up his vocals, it was sounded like he, the musician, who he, his stage name was Dave Seville, sounded like he was singing with chipmunks. And he found a way to make him sound like three different chipmunks. And he called them Alvin, Simon, and Theodore. Alvin is the sociopath leader. <laughs> He's crazy, dude. Simon is the smart one, my favorite. And Theodore is the chubby, whiny one. Second fan theory for Sailor Moon fans, I totally think the three lights are exactly the same as Alvin and the Chipmunks. I did that on an instant fan theory on Twitter years and years and years ago, and people were like, what are you talking about? But think about it for a little bit. Three lights, Alvin and the Chipmunks, same things. Let's keep going. So with the whole Chipmunks premise and gimmick, Ross Bogdasarian made... Um, he made a musical group, started releasing records, and then finally in 1961, the Chipmunks made their television debut. From there, people in my generation got the second Alvin and the Chipmunks that went from 1983 to 1990. That was a lot of them. That was a lot of Chipmunks. The, I definitely did not like those final episodes that was in that sort of different animation style. I'm pretty sure they were purchased by a different 
TV station and then that movie what was that movie with the balloons that movie made me really uncomfortable and I think that was Miramax animation which should always make everybody uncomfortable because nothing good came out of Miramax fight me so from the original Alvin and the Chipmunks in the 60s to the Alvin and the Chipmunks in the 80s to the Alvin and the Chipmunks in about 2015 I started kind of noticing not just recycled plot lines, which sure, if you want to be basic cut and dry about it, you can argue the point that yeah, maybe it's just recycled, rehashed plot lines, homages to itself. But I want to argue that Alvin and the Chipmunks exists in a time paradox where things from one iteration affect the other iteration, more like a ripple effect, like a ripple effect. And I even looked up paradoxes you know and I wanted to make sure that this made sense because I don't even know how this theory came to my mind but it was just like this little kiss from the heavens where all of a sudden I had this revelation about Alvin and the Chipmunks and how these things exist in a paradox things in the Chipmunks universe building upon themselves like invisible layers that's part of the paradox. In the Chipmunks, there are tons of science fiction themed episodes that featured the notions of time travel, notions of death, and casual inventing. Think about Simon. He does more inventing, I want to say, in the new series. Like he has a lab behind, like there's a secret lab through his closet or something like that. So there's lots and lots of inventing via Simon in the newer series. But he definitely had those genius, you know, kisses going on, those genius hints in that 80s series where Simon would casually create things that, like, change their lives. Do you guys remember the merry-go-round time machine? Like, come on. And this is with every single one of the series. Of course, the casual viewer might view this as self-referential, tongue-in-cheek, with a sense of humor and okay it has a couple of time traveling episodes i'm gonna show pictures here to support my point there's even episodes from the 80s series where they go back in time to meet the themselves from the 60s they went back in time to dave's past to affect dave's future but that's still contained within the same universe but once we start jumping to from your 80s self to your 60s self that's where we are, that's where we have time paradoxes. So let's talk a little bit about time paradoxes. I'm gonna read because reading quotes means you're smart. Put it in simplest terms, a time paradox is a phenomenon that occurs when a world exists not on a linear space, but, as I touched on before, a layered one. Alvin and the Chipmunks has many examples within the actual events of the show that we'll touch on shortly. But other paradoxes apply to the character's behavior, like how Dave Seville and Alvin both seem to be on the brink of insanity all the time. This might be due to the repetition compulsion. So let's understand a little more about the repetition compulsion. It can occur after a person experiences a traumatic event. He or she will repeat the event and its circumstances over and over again, which essentially traps them in a cycle of never ending trauma. That's freaking deep. Where did I, <laughs> I was a good writer four years ago. Sometimes memories and feelings associated with the event can lead, can, can even infiltrate dreams. For people who experience repetition compulsion, they cannot escape one awful moment in their lives because they keep reliving it. From there, I had linked, I had linked some uh, information about Sigmund Freud's The Uncanny and Otto Rank's concept of the double. I was an English major in college, a focus in creative writing, and it, there was a lot of philosophy involved in that major. Many people have heard of Sigmund Freud's The Uncanny Valley. More people have heard of his Oedipus Complex, but let's talk about The Uncanny Valley. Basically what The Uncanny Valley is, is it's something that looks so familiar but just a little bit weird that it terrifies you. For example, the easiest one to understand is a robot where that's almost human but like it's just not right in the face and a lot of video games it happens too where the developers are really working hard to make this hyper realism and it just doesn't quite look right in the face or a more non-literal example a more allegorical or metaphorical example could be you're taking a walk in your neighborhood you turn the corner and you run into yourself that's uncanny valley also what are you going to do 
And it's not like the same way we get excited, like when we see someone who looks like us and you're like, yay, my doppelganger, because like, you know, it's not your doppelganger because it looks different enough from you for your brain to understand that this is another person because we understand what physical traits it means to be a person, eyes, nose, mouth, like it's very easy to understand, eyebrows, a lot of expression there, but Uncanny Valley is you run into you and you know it's wrong and you know it's wrong is the thread that carries all of this together. It's interesting with Dave and Alvin. Shout out to everybody who puts Dave Seville onto the trifecta of cartoon animal daddies along with Man in the Yellow Hat and John Arbuckle. <laughs> Poor John Arbuckle. Eligible bachelor indeed. Yeah, we should do, we should have a conversation about John Arbuckle, Man in the Yellow Hat, and Dave Seville. Just them, just the three of them. Who's with me? Let me know, comment below. <laughs> I got you. But there's headbutting with Alvin and Dave, and it's played off comedically, you know, much like Homer and Bart, or Homer yells at Bart and like, it's all good. But no, like, Alvin, Alvin, he's nuts. And in this newest cartoon, the 2015 one, he's a freaking psychopath who's always putting Dave in danger. And Dave feeds right into it. Even in the 80s cartoon, there's always nonsense between Alvin and Dave that just doesn't happen with the other ones. Like you guys remember that episode where everybody was dressed like Alvin so that they didn't have to do chores and it was supposed to be some sort of lesson for Alvin but then Alvin thinks everybody is him? The fact that these characters get tricked so easily within their own universes, again, you normal people can go, it's for comedic effect, it's just a storytelling trope, it's a, it's a formula, like don't look so into it, but then you have people like me who are like, wait a minute, how does Alvin just think he's dead for a full episode? Like, it's just these things of like, they can trick each other. Or when Simon makes a machine that shrinks him down and they go into Dave's body, which yes, was a trope, like Muppet Babies did it. Like every cartoon took a turn going through somebody's body. Rugrats did it. Like that was just a thing at the time. That was just a formula. It was probably the same dude pitching the episode to every freaking network like it's the fact that these characters so willingly accepted these unbelievable scenarios these just wild things that just you would think can never happen that's where we have to go there's something strange happening in this world like magic exists science on a level that does not exist in reality exists in this world I mean, not to mention the fact that, you know, they're talking, singing chipmunks and they didn't have to go through any sort of mutant thing a la Ninja Turtles. You know, that's a separate issue in and of itself. That shows magic exists. But magic exists. And science fiction exists. And that's why the paradox can exist. I always felt that another applicable paradox in the Alvin and the Chipmunks world was the Polchinski paradox. Let me tell you a little bit about that one. He was the one that talked about black holes and time. Take a wormhole that has been made into a time machine and place its two mouths, each located at a black hole, at rest near each other out in interplanetary space. Then if a billiard ball is launched toward the right mouth, with an appropriate initial velocity, the ball will enter the right mouth, travel backwards in time, fly out the left mouth before it entered the right, and it will then hit its younger self, thereby preventing itself from ever entering the right mouth and hitting itself. That's really heady, like that's a lot to envision. And you can make shapes of anything and say that, but we still haven't mastered the, the time travel element yet, so it sort of, in my opinion, deflates. But I argued that this paradoxical idea is very evident in Alvin and the Chipmunks because each version of the show is just slightly different from the previous one. Like a billiard ball traveling, knocking the other one off course. I argued in this that it was the slight changes within Alvin and the Chipmunks that was part of the evidence of the paradox. So in the first iteration, the 60s cartoon, they were singers, staunchly singers. And then, you know, from the second one, we tried to, the one in the 80s, we sort of tried to bring it home a little bit, literally. They were, they were both, they, but they were celebrities. Like a big portion of that Alvin and the Chipmunks cartoon from when I was a kid was that they traveled and they had concerts and they were big celebrities. Like the Chipmunks were big freaking deals. And then in the 2015 one, they were students. 
there were so few episodes where the guys were singers or a band like that was the whole point of the original show and then the second show but in the third one it's this school setting and i'm sure that's just the result of executive feedback at nickelodeon or whatever where they just wanted this school time show but the whole premise of them being singers was like gone it was just this slice of life featuring chipmunk people so originally let's talk about dave originally dave seville was on stage with his boys they were an act together and then as the see different series went on we have dave becoming more and more and more of a washed up loser that's how he changed in the episode was it dave's wonderful life it was all about him not being able to like support them because he just needed to make some money so he was like a studio musician and he could, can't even produce music anymore he's such a failure and that dropping of failure is part of what is just evidence of this of this paradox that everything is existing on these layers these ripples outward into out of this world and that he's just crumbling and falling apart going back to when the boys met their previous 60s self in the 80s cartoon let's talk about other meta moments in the 2015 cartoon first episode first episode we have alvin not wanting to go to school and then Dave finds him in the closet and he's got a stack of Alvin dolls and it's singing like Christmas Christmas. And then when they, you know, the laboratory um, lock is witch doctor. So yeah, there's all these like self-referential meta moments. But why are there Alvin dolls? You're not a celebrity. You're not on stage anymore. What is happening that, that Alvin dolls can exist, right? So if, think about the episode Alvin's Wild Weekend, where he and Dave escape on like a father-son bonding trip. Alvin is, you know, wins a carnival game and is given an Alvin doll. But if they were never a band, in the 2015 version, they're not really a band. It seems like they jam a little bit, but they're not the celebrities that they once were. How is their Alvin merch? If Witch Doctor was never recorded, then they're not celebrities, and then therefore, why, why is he getting Alvin dolls? Unless they were celebrities on a different plane of reality. Don't get me started on the episode Theodore's Life as a Dog, going back to when they convinced Alvin that he was dead, they convinced Theodore that he was a dog. And he believed it, because reality is madness in this world. And I think my favorite one showing that everything exists on a time paradox are the two episodes with Dave the Wax statue. It's a, it's a weekend at Bernie's type of joke where the boys think Dave is dead. They have a wax statue of him and they drag it around with them and by the end of the episode the statue is destroyed. Here this is an example of the time paradox I'm talking about because the past, the present, the future, and the dead can all coexist together. Nothing's going to stop it from coming through that proverbial portal, that tunnel, that Polinsky's paradox that we discussed. I take it back on the wax statue one. In the first episode in the 80s, they thought he was turned to wax. And in the 2015, they think he was dipped in wax, which is really, really, really <laughs> dark, dude. But going back to the 2015 version, just to wrap this up, the set that series doesn't have any overt time traveling in the same way that the that the 1980s cartoon did but there's an episode called double trouble where alvin uses simon's cloning machine to make a second version of himself that second version wreaks havoc all over town who knows where that alvin could have come from that could be a past present or future alvin that comes through the time paradox unfortunately because of the poor writing on the 2015 show it wraps with a everything was just a dream which we all know is like that's like you've made these fantastical elements and you're just killing it because you don't know how to wrap it up i'm just grateful that the writers chose to feed into the time paradox even if they copped out and cut it off with this was all a dream they knew what they were doing they were feeding the machine proving that alvin and the chipmunks exist in these paradoxical worlds in a time paradox in a nightmare machine in a black hole in outer space and the very last paradox that I'll apply to Alvin and the Chipmunks is the grandfather paradox, which very simple to understand. If you go back in time and kill your grandfather, will you cease to exist? And this is where, in my opinion, this is why Alvin's always trying to kill Dave. <laughs> 
Alvin is trying to kill Dave because the death of Dave will end the time paradox. Think about it. How many times has Alvin turned on Dave, usually because of women, when he thought that Dave had a thing for the principal? That was in the 2015 cartoon. When he thought that Dave was had a thing for some other chick that he was into, 80s cartoon, and they had that, like, duel. And when there's any sort of tension between them, Alvin's the first one to be like, all right, Dave Seville, the gloves are off. He wants him gone, dude. He wants Dave Seville dead. Death will end the paradox. Death will set them free. And going back to Alvin's wild weekend, we see that lovely picture of them plunging into death off a cliff because Alvin knows that after 50 plus years of this ride, it's time for the paradox to end. But I'm not. I like it better when they're back with style. I'm entertained by the chipmunks. Are you? So that's all I got for you guys today. I'm Lauren Stone with poplurker.com. Make sure to check out this full fan theory below for all of the details broken down very, very cleanly instead of my excited ramble tangent because I love talking about cartoons, fan theories, and other wild, unbelievable things. But I hope I did this one justice because this was such a fun one for me to write. Be safe, be good, love what you love, and never stop lurking! Bye!